I'm Lauren from tastypc.tv. Today I'm going to be doing part two of Project Run. So for any of you who don't have a clue what it is I'm going on about, you should probably go back and watch part one first. Um, and I'll put the link to that in an annotation somewhere up here, but I'll also put it in the description below. Um, and in part one, I just do an introduction to this set of videos, going over my plan and the parts that I'm going to be using. Although I have been meaning to make this video for a really, really long time. Um, and in part one, I am a lot more nervous in front of a camera than I am now. So I do apologise to anyone who's going to go back and watch it. So in this video, I'm just going to be doing a really basic um, CPU water cooling loop in my Arc Mini home fitter PC slash server. Now, all the parts that I'm going to be using have been supplied by AquaTuning, um, and I will link them all in the description below in case you want to use any of them in your own water cooling loop. So originally when I was going to do this video, I was going to leave the camera running the whole time, um, but my SD card does completely fill up after about 8 minutes of filming. And also being completely honest, it has been over a year since I've water cooled a system. So I really just want to take my time, you know, go slow, not rush. And that is probably the biggest piece of advice that I can give to anyone out there who is new to water cooling. Um, and I'm going to be doing loads more water cooling builds like this in the next couple of months. And I am going to invest in a larger SD card. So before you know it, I will be like here again, but filming the whole thing. But in, in this one, I really just want to, you know, take my time and film it in segments. So I am sorry if it's a little bit choppy. So the first thing for me to do is completely strip it down as much as I can. Um, as you can see, I have already removed all of the hard drives. So let's get started. As I said before, I'm not going to be filming it all on camera, but I am still going to try and film as much of it as possible. So the first thing that I'm going to do is fit the Phobia water block, um, and I did actually have to remove the motherboard to be able to do this, because the Arc Mini CPU cutout is slightly off from where I need it to be to be able to fit the mounting screws while the board is still inside the case, um, but the majority of you won't have to do this. So I have just fit the mounting screws, um, and now I am just tightening everything up. Um, I am only going to hand tighten because I do find that that's enough, but it does come with an allen key in case you want to use it. Um, I am also running a competition with aqua tuning at the moment, where you can win one of two alpha cool water blocks, um, and that ends in two days on the 10th, and all you have to do to enter that is go to aqua tuning's Facebook page um, and post in a comment, Tasty PC sent me. So I'm using Phobia's um, He Grease Thermal Paste, and I do fat on paste like a complete spoon um, in this video. I normally just put a blob down um, and let the block spread it out like you're supposed to, but um, the heat grease came with a spatula and I got a little bit excited. Um, but after watching this, I did decide to go back and reapply, you know, just in case. So what I'm going to do now, um, I've just fit the water block and now I'm just fitting the retention screws. Um, and then I am going to be using Alpha Cool's compression fittings. And I do actually prefer compression fittings. I think that they look better. Um, I think they're a lot easier to use. And if you are new to water cooling, um, they're the ones that I'd recommend to you. Um, I did just chip some of my nails. This happens all the time when I work on computers. It's why they always look kind of bad in fits. So what I'm going to do now is put the board back inside the case um, and then fit the radiator and the reservoir. This is the Alpha Cool 240mm radiator that I'm going to be using. As you can see, I have already fitted the fans and the fittings. Although I have run into a problem that's really obvious now that I think about it. The fittings that I'm going to be using aren't long enough to clear the fans, um, and therefore I can't point them in the direction that's needed. So what I'm going to do is get some 25mm extensions ordered, and then just review something else for the meantime. In the end, I decided to go with these 25mm G quarter inch extensions from Phobia, um, and they're the exact length that I needed for the fittings to be able to clear the fan. And I decided to go for these ones because they're rotatable, but they're also a lot cheaper than most of the other extensions available. Unfortunately, I could only get it in black nickel, um, so it doesn't really go with the rest of the fittings, but it should still look pretty good altogether. So the next thing that I'm going to do is fit the radiator inside the case. I have set up the fans in a push configuration, the same as it was in the H100, um, and this is so that I can do a comparison video somewhere soon. I have only decided um, to put in four of the screws and just hand tighten them for now, just in case I do have to remove the radiator for any reason later. The next thing for me to do is fit the reservoir. This is the reservoir that I'm going to be using. 
Um, I have already fit the pump and compression fittings. I did decide to only use one pump in the end. It is still a little bit wet from where I flushed it. Although being honest, I do think the Alpha Cork could improve the finish of their res a little bit. Because even after cleaning it, um, it was still kind of messy in between the front panel and the reservoir itself. So fitting the res, last minute I did decide to use extension fittings here as well. It is a little bit stiff, but if you push it hard enough you'll be able to get it in. So now it's time for me to fit the tubing. I am going to be fitting the furthest away tube first, going from the radiator to the reservoir. My plan is to try and get it tucked up out of the way as much as possible, so you can hardly see it. Sometimes you do have to kind of heat the tubes up a little bit in your hands first, before they will go on all the way. Luckily the top tube does seem to be sitting at the top of the case by itself. I was actually worried that I might have to cable tie this one to the top. I do want to actually say a really big thank you to Aquatuning for supplying all these water cooling parts for the video. I also want to say a massive thank you to all of my subscribers for helping the channel get to where it is now. So now I'm just going to fit the tube um, from the reservoir to the water block and I'm going to try and get this one as short as possible. Although please try and keep the comments clean, I really don't want to know how much you want your tubing played with. So, as I really can't think of anything else to say about tubes, um, this is probably a good time for me to talk about Tasty PC. It saves me from having to make a subscriber video. So, I was thinking of maybe making some like bloggy kind of behind the scenes videos, but I would like to hear your opinion on it first. For example, with the Gigabyte motherboard review that I did recently, I overclocked with the motherboard for the video, um, and I did have a lot of people asking me why didn't I film that and then use that footage in the vid. And when I'm overclocking or building a rig or anything like that, I do like to be relaxed um, and I do it in a different room. But I do like to keep Tasty PC kind of professional looking. So what I would really like to do is continue to make the same amount of overviews and reviews that I'm doing now, if not more, um, at the highest level of production quality that I can afford, while simultaneously making these kind of behind the scenes videos. And they won't be the greatest quality, but they will give you kind of an insight into what happens in Tasty PC behind the camera. So I would love to know your opinion on that. Um, so as you can see, I am now fitting the final tube from the water block to the radiator. I am actually really looking forward to having the system back up and running. I really do miss having a home fitter PC. Plus Project Tasty is still in the, this is the case that I've chosen stage. And all of the other systems that I've built are currently in pieces um, because I'm using all different parts of them in all different videos. So it will be really nice to just have a computer that I can go straight on. So at this point I had actually finished with the tubing but then I sat down and looked back at it and I decided that I could probably make the front two ch um, tubes shorter. So that is what I'm doing now. Actually, speaking of Project Tasty, I can't decide whether I want to water cool it or not. Originally when I knew that I was going to be getting a 600T, I wanted to mod it, um, put a 360mm in the top, a 240mm radiator in the front, um, but once I actually saw it, it was just way too special to take a Dremel to. So as I see it, my two options are either using a H100 or external water cooling it. Now I would prefer to water cool it because I do think that it looks better, but at the same time I do see me moving this system around a lot. and um, just me carrying the system and an external radiator like to the conservatory then to the bedroom and back to the conservatory by myself <laughs> will be a complete nightmare um so i would love to know your opinion on that as well also if i do water cool i'd love to know what color coolant you think i should use now it's time for the moment of truth filling the loop <laughs> so as you can see i have covered all of the potential drip points for kitchen roll and this is to protect the parts still in the case, while at the same time allowing me to easily see if it drips at all. I know that a lot of people, when it comes to leaks, think that a tube will just fly straight off and cool and will just go everywhere. Um, but if it is going to leak, it will most likely just be a slow, dripping leak, which should be easy to sort out. And really, if you have tightened everything up properly, then you should be fine. So what I'm doing now is just filling the res up until past the pump intake hole, but not all of the way to the top. I am using Phobia's UV Super Zero Coolant and do plan on doing a kind of mini review on this somewhere soon. And depending on where you look, it does currently look either pink or this rusty orange, 
but it will be interesting to see what it looks like under UV light. I'll definitely have to add that into the like mini review. So what I'm going to do in a second um, is turn the pump on until the coolant goes below the pump intake hole and then turn it back off again. Um, and then I'm just going to repeat this process, filling up a little bit, turning it on until the water level gets below a certain point, um, turning it back off, etc. I do keep um, glancing over to the kitchen room now and again just to check for any drips. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually secure the reservoir to the case. No matter where it was, the holes just wouldn't line up. I know it seems like it's taking ages to fill with this little bottle, but you should have seen how bad it was in real time, especially as I seem to keep unintentionally sucking the coolant back out of the reservoir because <laughs> I'm a spoon. But it would be interesting to know what you guys think of this style of video, where I film it and then speed up and do a voiceover at the end. Would you like to see it in more videos? Um, for example, case reviews. I always put a system in the case. Would you prefer me to build it on camera and then speed it up like this? Or just fade straight to it like I do now? I'd love to know what you think. Um, so as you can see, air is starting to leave the tubes and lots of air bubbles are being pushed out of the reservoir. I'm sorry for cutting the filling process short. My SD card ran out of space and stopped filming without me realising. So I have now finished filming the loop, but it is currently full of air bubbles. So the first thing that I'm going to do to try and get rid of them is just to turn the pump on and off, and hopefully that will move some of them along the tube. Air does normally always rise to the highest point, so you can tip your case backwards and forwards, and that will move a lot of the air as well. Or if you're feeling brave, you can squeeze the tube a little bit. But the majority of bubbles will move on their own if you give it enough time. So what I'm going to do is just leave the loop running for around 12 hours, um, and this will leak test it, but get rid of most of the bubbles at the same time. As you can see, most of the bubbles are now gone, um, and the loop has been running for around 12 hours without any issues at all. I have placed a red LED strip on the roof behind the radiator, and I think it gives the system a nice look. Um, unfortunately, the camera isn't really doing it any justice. I've also placed a dust filter over the rear 120mm fan grill, but I couldn't make any other changes because it might affect the um, future H100 performance comparison video. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how this basic loop has gone. I do think it's a nice way to introduce water cooling to Tasty PC. So this is just the first of many water cooling videos that I'm going to be doing for aqua tuning. I started off small, but I'm hoping to work up to large complex cooling solutions. And then hopefully some of you who are um, a little bit reluctant to water cool will be inspired to have a go for yourself. Um, so as I said earlier, I have linked all of the products that I've used in the description below, but I've also written down um, some of my opinions on each of the products as well. Now I know a lot of you are interested um, in how this compares to a H100, and I'm going to be doing a video on that very, very soon. Um, but for the time being, if you like this video, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.